What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Fish Sports History for January 15th, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Welcome to a game day edition, a playoff game day. Hopefully, it is not our last game day of the season. More on that in a bit. As always, let's start with a recap of the question of the day. I asked you yesterday, based on his performance in the playoffs, should the Eagles have kept Derek Barnett? And it was pretty split 50-50 on this, yes and no. Um, I I tend to kind of lean toward the no just because he wasn't doing much. And I I can't blame that on the coaches because it's – he's never really lived up to his expectations the entire career. So new change of scenery. He's playing differently. I mean, it, it is what it is. Like, I can't necessarily, again, put that on the coaches just because, again, so many times people blame, put blame on the coaches when it should be on the players. Like, you can't – guys are either motivated in some points or not. And I, I think Derek Barnett's a case of he just was not motivated for whatever reason. In Philly, for change of scenery, he has him playing better. And it's not like he's playing lights out. He's just playing better. So – Thank you, as always, for participating in the question of the day. 267-495-8531. Send a text message. Leave a voicemail. Get your voice heard. While you're at it, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, Jimbo underscore Mont. Let's get those subscribers up over 100. Once we hit 100, it opens up a lot more doors for us to grow this thing. So go Jimbo underscore Mont. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Even if you're listening as a podcast, again, I know we have more people listening than are subscribed, so just hit the subscribe button. You'll be good to go. Before the game today, if you haven't done so already, I did a guest spot on the Clashing Conferences podcast last week, previewing this game, talking a little Nick Sirianni, Jalen Hurts, so go check that out, the Clashing Conferences podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. All right, Flyers are in St. Louis tonight, taking on the Blues. Another big test for them. Anxious to see if they can keep that momentum rolling. Sixers are at home today against the Rockets at 1. Joe is officially listed listed as questionable. And if you'd asked me yesterday, I would have said no. There's no way he's going to play because they play Denver tomorrow on a back-to-back. But now, I mean, uh, Covington's out. I think uh, Mo Bamba was out. So they're, they're kind of short with big men, so maybe he will play. Um, I don't know. That game is at 1, though, a little afternoon matinee. We'll see. I mean, it, either way, he should be back at some point this week. I don't know if they're going to bring him back to play a double or back-to-back. And it, I guess it depends on how they feel the other big guys can, can stack up. Uh, but that, that's 1 o'clock today against the Rockets. All right, Philly Goat, do you believe in this Eagles team? Do you believe that they can can somehow get it all together and make it right? If you do, go to Philly Goat, buy your Believe shirt. Yes, it was made for the Phillies, but you can wear it for the Sixers. you got to just believe in all of these teams. Let's try to change the vibe around here in Philly. The Believe shirts, get them now. Again, if you get the right color, you can use it for all the different sports. Check out the new canvas shoes they have as well. Those things are phenomenal. That's phillygoat.com. When you go to check out, use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off your order. That's phillygoat.com. Promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off of your order. All right. Well, all week, this is what we've been leading up to. Yes, the Sixers and Flyers play, but... The story of the day is the Eagles tonight, eight. What is it? Eight or eight fifteen against the Buccaneers. Uh, the, before we get into that, we know who the next opponent will be. If, should they win, they will go to Detroit. Play three o'clock on Sunday. Thanks in part to the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboy. They could not leave well enough alone. They could not let the Eagles out cowboy them. They said no hold my beer this is how we do it uh great win for the packers great loss you 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 gotta love it i mean you love to see that all of the hype and i'm waiting because i I don't hear too many cowboy fans chirping now and win or lose no matter what happens i i mean yeah maybe the eagles collapse was a little bit bigger but yeah 
all, all the Cowboys fans, I don't, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, you're, you're going to be right there with us. So, great job, great, great job. Dak's going to Dak. He, he was been holding that in all season and just could not wait to get it out in the playoffs. The biggest moment possible, and Dak's going to Dak. So miss me with the Dak is the MVP. Miss me with the Cowboys are going back to glory. Go back to your holes, Cockroach fans. Let those trophies collect another year of dust and just keep running your mouths again. All right. Back to the Eagles Bucks, though. Eagles lead the all-time series against the Bucks 9 to 8 in the regular season, including a 25 to 11 win back in week 3. Playoffs are a different story. The Buccaneers lead 3 to 2. They won the 79 divisional playoff. Uh, we know about the 2002 NFC Championship game and then just 2 years ago they won the wild card game in 2021. The Eagles winning the wild card round in 2000 and 2001. So there's a lot of familiarity specifically when it comes to the playoffs with this team. Um, so much so that I would actually put the Buccaneers in my top five rivals for the Eagles of teams that I dislike, along with the Cowboys, um, Cowboys, the Giants. I got to put the Cardinals in there just because of the when I grow up. When I was growing up, they were in the division, the Buccaneers, and probably Washington with the four, the Patriots and 49ers, a close distance for the the top five but i digress so there is a lot of familiarity there is a lot of uh, dislike for me anyway against the bucks um so there's sort of your background um and uh, i i it's and, and again the players change and everything but it's one of those things i just not really fond of that team um, so as far as the pick, we're 10, 10 and one on the season. If this is our last day, we need to win this bet in order to become above 500. And I think ultimately we probably break even money wise. It's been a very, very quiet week, all things considered for a playoff game. And I think that just shows the, the lack of, I don't know, faith, just fatigue with this team and what th- has been going on. Um, but it seemed a very quiet week for a playoff week. Um, and, I mean, everything, everything out there is pointing toward the Buccaneers winning this game and potentially winning it big. Um, but one thing that, that's been sticking with me all week, and and that is what Dal- Dallas Goddard said, Um the fact that they, they kind of thought they could coast and they sort of just thought that they could kind of skate in. Uh, again, I do think some of that spiraled a little bit out of control. But I, I got to think, like, why would he say that? Like, why why say that? Is it true? Um, was he sticking up for Nick Sirianni all that time? I just, to me, it's very telling. Uh, you don't come out and say that in front of the media. If you're not thinking that and Dallas Goddard is not necessarily one of the leaders of the team. So if he's saying it, what is that saying? Are the leaders backing that up? I mean, they certainly played like they thought they were just going to roll in and and win those games late in the season. Um, I don't know. Like I can't get over that. And if they do, and if they just kind of played the same mentality for those three games, is there something more that this team can kind of dig into? Because certainly the fact that guys were getting hurt and not playing focused, that sort of happened. So it, it makes sense to me. And it, there's a reason why he said it. And I don't know whether it's to motivate the team, whether he was sticking up for Sirianni. Uh, but either way, it's very telling. I think if he's sticking up for Sirianni, maybe this team, ha- he hasn't lost the locker room. Maybe they're rallying around him which I think bodes well for today. If they did coast, that means they didn't put their best effort in. If they put their best effort in, I think that bodes well for today. I've been calling for this for weeks, and maybe because it's a lot of wishful thinking here, maybe I'm drinking the Kool-Aid, maybe I'm going to fall like Charlie Brown, excuse me, Lucy with the football. But something tells me the get-right spot is coming. I don't think this team is going to go out like that. 
I think the fact that Dallas lost, it sort of served up on a silver platter for you. And if the cards fall the way they could, you could get your rematch against San Francisco, sort of get the revenge that way. I, and, and again, that's down the road, but I, there's, there's just, I can't get what Dallas Goddard said out of my head. And I can't stop thinking about it. I've been mean, thinking about it all week, and I can't figure out what the end game is. Is this the get right spot? I mean, everything's lining up to they're going to have to run the ball, which, again, against a team that blitzes the way the Tampa Bay does, that's how you neutralize the blitz and buy Jalen some time with some play action and things like that, get Smitty involved. Hopefully uh, my my favorite Eagle, Quez Watkins, can kind of do something. Goddard, I'm looking at you. If you've been coasting, now would be the time to step up. I think the defense has to just do enough because Baker's going to Baker. Uh, that's kind of what he does. Um, and again, maybe I, I'm putting myself out there. This could blow up 100% in my face, but I don't think this team is done yet. I, there's just something you don't, you 10 and 1 team just does not fall apart like this. It's never happened. And at this point, style points, all of that goes out the window. Give me a win today. I think they cover. I think the Eagles win by almost double digits today. I think it's the get right spot. They're going to be able to move the ball. I think running the ball, they're going to get get into positions where they're going to force Baker to throw. And that ultimately sometimes is when things get happened. They got to get a pass rush on him. His ribs are hurt. So we got to get after him early and get some hits on him. If they're ever going to get right, now's the time to do it. I'm going Eagles minus three is our official pick today. We have a date with Detroit next Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. The Eagles get it done today. And then once we win today, we'll see where it goes from there and see how they play. But I, I don't know. I can't, like I said, I can't get what Dallas said. I can't I can't see this team going out this way. And if they do, that opens up a whole other can of worms that we'll deal with starting tomorrow. But Eagles minus three is our official pick. Let's go, birds. I, they're not going down. They're not going out yet. The get right spot has been coming. It's coming today. Eagles by three. Book it. Uh, finally, last thing on the Eagles, I have to say, um, and it, it, it's kind of, I, I don't know what the word is, flattering, I guess, uh, but 49ers aren't even playing. And the Eagles are on their mind right now. And I think this is why if the Eagles can somehow win this game the way things are going, we're on the 49ers' minds and we're not even playing. Juwan Jennings was talking trash about, oh, they have no shot to win. They don't have this. Who's even playing for them? Uh, with the A.J. Brown out, they're done. And it's just kind of one of those things, kind of put that in the back of your head. Juwan Jennings I mean, if the 49ers were on their minds still, and that's why, I mean, great. You won the regular season game in Philly. It's setting up for a potential date out here. I'm just kind of, we'll leave it at that. But so what happened to the Cowboys when they started talking trash. So, all right. But the official pick today, Eagles minus three. As always on game day, the question of the day is drop your Eagles Buccaneers predictions, 267-495-8531. Am I nuts? Let me have it if you think I'm nuts. Uh, but I, I see them putting it together and, and getting it out. I could be way wrong. And if I am, I want I want you to hear it or give it to me. Let me know. 267-495-8531. Leave a text message, voicemail, whatever. Drop, Give me and drop your Eagles Bucks predictions for tonight. All right, shifting gears a little bit, and we're going to go back to 1965. And on January 15th, 1965, it was one of the most pivotal days in Sixers history. The Sixers traded Paul Newman. No, not the salad dressing guy. Yes, I know he was an actor too, guys. I know. But not the salad dressing guy. Connie Durkin, Leo Schaefer, or Lee Schaefer, and $150,000 for one Wilt Chamberlain. It was a homecoming for Wilt Chamberlain. He came back home. Uh, we know he went to Overbrook, played in Kansas, played a year for the Globetrotters, and then was drafted by the Philadelphia Warriors. The Warriors moved to San Francisco, had some issues drawing. The team, they didn't really have a team around Wilt, uh, so they were looking to rebuild. So the, they made this trade with the Sixers, sent Wilt back home, and 
it, it was one of those rare cases where the trade actually helped out both teams. For the Sixers, it helped legitimize their franchise. They had just moved a couple years earlier from Syracuse uh, and, and improved the franchise, made them one of the elite teams in the Eastern Conference or Eastern Division back then. But it helped legitimize them since the move from Syracuse. They were kind of floundering a little bit after the move, and Wilt Chamberlain gave them the star power and made them instantly one of the best teams in the Eastern Division. For the Warriors, it, it was a necessary thing, the, the whole addition by subtraction thing. They were able to improve. Uh, they were in a, like a 17-game losing streak or something crazy like that when they traded Will. They, they didn't really do much that next year, but they slowly got better over the next two seasons. And again, it was a thing that or a trade that helped out both teams, and it all ultimately culminated with the Sixers beating the Warriors in the 1967 NBA Finals for the Sixers' first NBA championship in Philadelphia. And it ultimately, that team is widely regarded as one of the top 5, 10 teams ever uh, just because of how dominant they were. Uh, all told, the trade worked out very well for the Sixers. Uh, Wilt, believe it or not, only played four years as a Sixer. Averaged 27 points and 24 rebounds. His number 13 is retired by the Sixers at, at the Wells Fargo Rafters. One of five teams that have retired Wilt's number 13. You got the Warriors, the Sixers, the Lakers, the Globetrotters, and the Kansas Jayhawks. Uh, I don't think anybody is ever even remotely close to that. Uh, but on this day back in 1965, Wilt Chamberlain came home as the San Francisco Warriors traded Wilt Chamberlain to the Sixers for Paul Newman, not the actor, Connie Durkin, um, Lee Schaefer, and $150,000. It ultimately led to both teams making the NBA Finals with the Sixers beating the Warriors in 1967, four games to two. Finally today, sticking with the Sixers, our free agents who had a fresh start in Philly uh, was George McGinnis. And this was an interesting case, too. He was originally drafted by the Sixers, played in the ABA, somehow signed a contract with the Lakers, and Larry O'Brien, who was the commissioner, ruled against the, the Knicks. He had to, They had to repay the Sixers some money. Ultimately, everything, when it was all said and done, George McGinnis signed a six-year, $3.2 million guaranteed contract with the Sixers in 1975 after playing for the Indiana Pacers in the ABA. Immediately helped the Sixers out, uh, led them to the – he was there in 75-76, and then in 76, his ABA teammates – or uh, I shouldn't say teammates. ABA brother and Dr. J and Caldwell Jones came, and then immediately the Sixers went to the 76-76 or 76-77, the Sixers went to the 76-77 NBA Finals. There you go. We'll get it out there. And had a 2-0 lead over the Portland Trailblazers, Bill Walton's team, uh, before losing four games to two. All told, Caldwell jo or uh, George McGinnis Stayed in Philly for three years, averaged 21 points a game, 11 and a half rebounds, made two all-star teams, helped lead them to that finals. But after that finals run, he was traded for one Bobby Jones, who ultimately would be a member and helped the Sixers to multiple NBA final appearances and finally was on that 83 team that won the championship when our guy from earlier last week, or from last week, Moses Malone, came in. So while George McGinnis had a decent start to his NBA career in Philly, got to the NBA finals, in Philly he is probably more known at least for me, I would say, is being the guy that was traded for Bobby Jones who played an integral role on the Sixers winning the NBA championship in 1983. But our free agent who had a fresh start in Philly is George McGinnis for the Sixers who came over from the ABA and teamed with Dr. J and Caldwell Jones to lead the Sixers to the 77 NBA Finals before being traded for Bobby Jones who was one of the key cogs on that Sixers team that won the championship in 1983. On this day back in 1965, the Sixers traded for Wilt Chamberlain, bringing him home with a move that ultimately led them to winning the NBA championship. 
We're on the 49ers fans' minds, or 49ers players' minds, which is even crazier. I, I, whatever, man. You do you there, uh, Jawan jo- Jennings. Jawan Jennings, you do you. Uh, we give the Eagles pick. I'm telling you, they put it together. Eagles cover the three points, move on to Detroit, and we're having a whole different conversation for the next week. Let's do it. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jimbo underscore Mott. Check out my guest appearance on the Clashing Conferences podcast. Lots of things for you to do today. Call or text the text line, 267-495-8531. Give me your picks. Am I crazy? Am I drinking the Kool-Aid? Let me know. It's going to be a cold one today, but it's a game day cold, and they just hit differently. Go have yourself some Monday. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm Jim Montgomery. And until next time, hopefully not for the last time, go Birds!